Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video. Today I will be walking you through how I did my corrupted, or what I like to call it, my shattered catcher look. To get started, I'm starting off with my cosplay already on in a clean face. The first and probably most important step is priming the face. I've gone over this in a past video, but I'm using two separate primers. One for my T-zone and the other for the rest of the face. After that, I'm using some black eyeshadow on a brush to map out where exactly I want the corruption side of catcher to be and where the lights will sit. I mentioned I'm using lights for this look, right? Anyways, I then went on to do the normal side of Catra's makeup, which I've made a video all about already, so I'm going to speed through this part. Once that was finished, it's finally time to move on to the corruption side. I'm starting off by smearing black face paint on the spot we mapped out earlier, which, just a side note, You'll see me stop in just a second because I realized I wanted to glue down and cover my eyebrow, and I can't do that if face paint has already been placed. There are plenty of tutorials that explain how to glue down your eyebrows, but for me, I just use an Elmer's glue stick, smear that up all in my eyebrow, brush it through all the... hairs? Place a whole bunch of setting powder on top of that, and repeat those steps two more times or until happy. Then it is finally time to finish painting that part of my face. Once that was done, I placed setting powder on top of the face paint to really keep it all in place. Please use setting powder, you don't want to get face paint all over everything. Next up isn't really necessary, but I felt my face looked weird, I wonder why, so I decided to place some highlights on my cheekbone and forehead by using some shimmery grey eyeshadow so that it adds more depth to that side of my face. Okay, so maybe I added a little too much highlight, but that's fine. I also tried to contour and add eyeliner and mascara while I was at it, but it didn't make much of a difference, so you can skip these steps as well if you want. And now comes time for the centerpiece of this look, the lights. And this is where I'm going to place a slight flashing warning. I turn on these lights multiple times throughout this part of the tutorial, and when mixed with the time lapses, it can possibly be harmful to others, so watch at your own discretion and stay safe. Now back to the video in three, two, one. I'm using some clip-on hair lights that I got off of Amazon, and I think the set of five costs about $10? Because these are meant for hair and not for your face, I had to trim the strands down to the correct length so that they could sit right on my face, which is safe to do since all the electricity is in the clip itself, but if at any point when working with lights like these, you feel some sort of heat coming from the clip, take them off. Halfway through filming the reveal of this look, this happened to me, so I stopped what I was doing, turned off the lights, and began to take them off as safe and as fast as I could. And nothing happened, thankfully, I was fine, but just be careful not to burn yourself. I also put on a wig cap before gluing down any of the strands just to keep my hair out of my face while doing all of this. Speaking of gluing this down, I did this by using liquid latex, which worked out fine, but I would suggest using another face safe adhesive, such as Prosaid or Spirit Gum. Liquid latex was all I had on hand during this time, so that's just what I ended up using. Now let's move on to the main reason why I call this look my shattered Catra look. When looking at reference photos, all the little glowy pieces on Catra's face give me the impression that they were broken shards of glass stuck to her face. So, in order to imitate that, I'm using small pieces of gelatin and gluing that to my face. What is gelatin, you may ask? Well, according to Wikipedia, gelatin is an excellent medium for prosthetic makeup due to its flesh-like consistency, elasticity, high tear threshold, and ability to capture the fine details you get the point. Let's talk about how I made this. Glamagore has a great tutorial on how to make gelatin, but just to run you through the basics, all gelatin is is glycerin, gelatin, and water, and proportion-wise, I used a 2 to 1 to 1 ratio. And this made more than enough glass shards for this look. I stirred all the ingredients together and placed it inside a microwave to heat it up in intervals of 15 seconds, until it was a goopy consistency and smelled like death. I am not exaggerating when I say this. This will smell terrible, so prepare yourself and the noses around you. In order to get the shape that I wanted, I poured the foul-smelling gelatin into a plate to cool until completely solid. I actually had to redo this step because there was too many air bubbles the first time I did this. But the cool thing about gelatin is that if unhappy with the result, you can just chuck it back into the microwave and reheat it. It's great. But once I was happy with how it looked, I covered both the top and the bottom with setting powder to stop it from sticking to itself and cut it up into pieces, trying my best to make each piece look like a broken piece of glass. Moving back to the makeup. I'm tacking down all the pieces we just made over the lights and down my neck, once again using liquid latex to accomplish this. To 
To turn each piece from stinky gelatin to shiny glass, I used a cream highlighter on each edge of each piece to give a more iridescent look to them. I wanted to add in the purple outline Catcher has on her face, so I mixed face paint colors together to make a light purple and place that on the outer edge of the corruption side. But this only made me look bruised, so if I were to do this look again, I would place a layer of white face paint down and then a layer of purple face paint on top, just so it's more noticeable. To cover the hair clips, I place another wig cap over my head and then the wig itself, but oh no no! We're not done yet. As a finishing touch, I made this broken version of Catcher's headpiece, which I made from 6mm foam and weathered with acrylic paint, and glued that to my head once again using liquid latex. Once those were secured onto my face, I touched up my wig, put in some contacts, and painted my whole arm with a wash of black face paint. Which, I don't use water activated paints for this. It stained my arm and I had to go to school the next day, so I had to go to school with a stained arm. It was not fun. Don't be like me and use a cream-based or even alcohol-based skin-safe paint for this step. And then I was done! I just want to mention that if you haven't already guessed, this look was inspired by Glam and Gore's toxic bioluminescent mermaid look, which I will have linked in the description of this video, so go check that out. But besides that, I hope you guys find this helpful, and if you do try to attempt this makeup, please show me by tagging me in a post or just DMing me a photo of it. Comment and like this video, and subscribe if you haven't already, and I shall hopefully see you next week in my next video. Goodbye!